The combat in Mithras can be quite daunting to start off with. So I am going to guide you through the process one step at a time. I've GM'd a few combats in my time and I have found that if you have a good understanding of the basics, then you can easily adapt when your players want to do something slightly different. So let's get on with the basics. So first up, combat rounds and combat turns. So a combat round lasts roughly about five seconds and each round is made up of several turns. Each turn, the participant can do one or more of the combat actions as long as they have action points. Once they have used up all their action points that they can no longer take any actions. Generally, there is a cycle that I'll talk about later in this video, but we generally go something like combat round one, turn one, two, three, then combat round two, turn one, two, three, so forth and so on. You get the idea. Okay, next up, action points and types of actions. The number of action points that a character has is determined by the table on page eight of the core rule book. Characters add together their intelligence and their dexterity and then consult the table. Generally, characters will have either two or three action points. Now, action points can be used throughout the combat to take one of three different types of actions. There are proactive actions, reactive actions, or free actions. And all the free actions do not require using an action point. Well, the proactive and the reactive actions require the use of an action point. So think about the proactive actions as what the character is going to do to someone or something. There's a full list that can be found on page 91 of the core rule book, but they include things like attack, cast a spell, move, ready a weapon and struggle. Now, the last one, struggle, is what characters do while they're being grappled. And I'll link um, a video all about grappling in the description of this video. Reactive actions are actions that a character does in response to something happening to them. Again, there is a full list starting on page 92, but they include things like evade, counterspell, parry and interrupt. Finally, the free actions include things like assess the situation, drop weapons, speak and ward location. The last one, ward location, is used for passive blocking. And I'll make a video of this in the future when we get more to the complexities of combat. So also remember that free actions do not require uh, an action point being allocated to them. At this point, it's really important to state that action points cannot be saved. So in a turn, if a character do, does not wish to take an action, then it is assumed that they're taking the proactive action called dither. OK, that means that they waste their action point and it's gone. So next, let's look at the combat cycle. So when combat begins, everyone, monsters, opponents, characters, all roll their initiative. And that determines who goes first in each turn. I use roll 20 and I have a turn cycle already set up. But if you don't use a virtual tabletop, then make sure you've got some way of recording the combat, what combat round and what combat turn you are on. And if you have any really good ideas for this, then please do add them in the comments. OK, so the combat starts with round one turn one. Everyone 
who can act and has action points, completes an action in order of the initiative. When everybody has acted who can act, we go back up to the top of the initiative order and go on to combat round one still, but turn two. Everybody then takes an action and then we might move, we would move on to combat round one, turn three. Now remember, don't assume just because um, characters have three action points that they will still have action points left in turn three. This is because they might be using their action points for reactive actions. So in combat round one, turn one, the monster might try to hit them and they'll use up one action point to parry the blow. And then later on in that same turn, they might use an action point to actually do their own attack. And finally, in that turn, something might be hurled at them and they use up their final action point to evade. Then at the end of turn one, they've literally got no more action points left, so they won't be doing anything for the rest of that combat round. It's a bit complicated or sounds complicated, but once you get into the flow of it, it's really easy to um, see who's got action points left and trust your players here. I often say when we get to the next turn, who's still got action points? As the GM, I don't actually monitor their action points. I trust my players to do that. Okay, so once we finished combat round one, um, we've done turn one, turn two, turn three, and nobody's got action points left, then we move on to combat round two we go back to the top of the initiative order and everybody's action points are refreshed then we continue the combat in initiative order so just to remind you initiative is rolled at the beginning of combat and it stays there right the way to the end you do not keep rolling it at the beginning of every combat round and that's it three basic elements of combat. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the clashing of weapons when we look at attacking and parrying. And check this video out here if you would like to see an example of combat.